Hi, good morning. Um, this is Mama Sanity, and this is Monday, March the 25th, and I hope y'all are having a great day. I'm going to do things a little bit different. Um, you know how when you have an idea in your head and you have something in your heart and your mind, and there's a certain way that you envision it going, and then you lay it out and you do it, and then come to find out that's not really what you envision doing and so you're kind of trying to work on how to fix it and everything well that's kind of what's going on um, I had a vision in my heart that I wanted to share my daily devotionals and prayers with y'all to to help y'all out on y'all's daily chaotic lives um, now in watching back over my videos I've come to the realization that hmm, I think I'm repeating myself over and over and I'm kind of saying the same thing over and over and it's kind of getting really boring. And so um, what I decided to do is I'm not going to do my daily devotionals and prayers to you every day, Monday through Friday, like I was. I'm going to switch it up a bit and what I'm going to do is when something comes, like I still have my devotionals and my prayers that I have written out. but. It's gonna, I'm gonna share it when I feel like the time is right or when something, when God puts something in my heart that says, hey, I think this will, you know, help people or something like that instead of just the daily repetitive over and over same thing. So today, so all this weekend and last night, my husband and I were talking and we were trying to figure out, you know, because I was like, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to not sound all sweet and innocent. I don't know how to sound like myself behind a camera and I don't know how to be my crazy, quirky, goofy self on camera and I don't know how to make things sound interesting. And he said, yeah, it's just something you're just, you're just gonna have to figure it out, you know? And so last night I was just, you know, my five-year-old Hannah is sick and she's, you know, got it coming out of both ends, to, to say the least. So she's not feeling good. So yesterday was a, kind of a really tough day. As soon as we got back from church, she was just not feeling good. And she's five, and she's a girl, so she's very dramatic. And it's, you know, Mommy, i got to go potty. And so I've got to walk her to the potty with a throw-up bucket, because when she's sitting on the potty, I've got to sit in front of her with a throw-up bucket, just in case it's coming out. You know, she's five, and, you know, girls are dramatic. So... It was kind of a long day yesterday and a long night last night to say the least it after everybody went to bed you know we her and i stayed on the couch watching shows and it and it started out you know every few minutes it would oh mom, my tummy my tummy and she's trying so hard to get to sleep bless her heart and she finally ended up going to sleep and then it, it turned into like maybe every hour she would, you know, wake up and mom, are you there? Mom, my tummy hurts, you know, so it was kind of a long night to say the least, but that's all part of parenting. That's all part of having kids. Okay. So when I woke up this morning and I'm going to share with you a little bit about how my first hour and a half of the day went, and then I'm going to read a little something. And the reason why I'm doing this is there's kind of a point behind it and this it, the, also the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanted to create mama sanity because just to give you a little glimpse in in my daily life now like like d things change day to day things are not always the same and I'm going to tell you some day some mornings are better some mornings are worse but let me just start off with telling you how my morning went this morning so I had to write it down because it was quite a few things so I don't want to leave anything out so six o'clock, my alarm goes off. I wake up from the couch. I go and I set my kids' medicines and vitamins out on the counter and I come back to read my devotionals. So I'm starting to read my devotionals and I'm getting lost in that and I hear my boys' alarm clocks go off. Now, the only issue in that is my, my eight-year-old, my daughter, she has an alarm clock and she likes to wake up like 10 minutes before the boys. I don't know, it's a girl, I don't know. She just, she likes to wake up before the boys and start getting ready because it takes her the longest because, you know, girls are dramatic and that's just, it takes us longer to get ready. So when I heard the boys' alarm go off, it hit me. Okay, I never heard Haley get up. I never heard Haley's alarm go off. So let me go upstairs and see what's going on. So I go upstairs and her alarm is going off. It's just turned down really low. And so I'm like, Haley, Haley, you gotta get up. Your alarm's been going off. Well, of course, she looks up at me and she looks at the alarm, she looks at the time, and she starts freaking out, like, oh my gosh, I'm late. And I'm like, Haley, just calm down, it's 10 minutes, it's okay. 
no, 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 mom, oh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't hear my alarm go off, and uh, what happened, who turned it down? She starts breaking out. Calm down, Haley, it's okay, just get, just turn it off and get dressed. Turn it up before you turn it off, so you know tomorrow it'll be at a decent volume, and just get dressed. Okay, so then I go back downstairs, and Hannah starts waking up, Mom, where are you, Mom, where are you? And so I go to her, and she, I said, are you gonna throw up? And she was like, I don't know, and so I sit with her for a few minutes, and I'm like, I've, I've come to the conclusion that, okay, this is going to be one of those mornings where my devotional is going to have to be pushed a little bit aside. So when I go to the doctor later this morning, I'll take my devotional stuff. And while I'm in the waiting room, I can finish up that. So then all of a sudden, I hear Haley freaking out. She comes downstairs and she's dressed. <coughs> Sorry. She's dressed. <coughs> but no shoes on. She has her socks. Okay. Let me give you a little background about her, her shoe situation. So she, she's like a normal girl. She has tons of shoes, right? Like every normal girl does. And it depends on, you know, it depends on what season or what mood she's in. You know, last year, there's one pair of boots. She couldn't stand. She didn't like them. Oh, they're uncomfortable. I don't like them. They're ugly, blah, blah, blah. Now they're her favorite boots, right? So she's been wearing these black boots with her, her pants like every day. Well, wear and tear one of the straps broke off my husband tried to fix it he fixed it and then she went to school and it got broken again so the strap looks funny because it's just like kind of waving off so she's like I can't wear my, my favorite boots and so I'm like she's freaking out and I'm saying well honey you gotta get a pair of shoes on because you can't go to school barefooted and she was like well nothing matches and nothing looks right nothing feels like okay Calm down, let's go upstairs. So I go upstairs with her and we're going through shoe after shoe. How about this shoe? No, I don't like that color. How about this shoe? No, that doesn't match. How about this shoe? No, I don't like the way that feels. So you can tell my patience is kind of wearing thin and she's getting very frustrated. And so she was like, "Never mind. fine. I'll just wear, I'll wear these tie shoes, these pink sparkly shoes that you know you have to tie. She knows how to tie her shoe. She's not perfect at it, but she knows how to do it. So she gets frustrated. So I go downstairs sit back down with Hannah, all of a sudden she comes stomping down the stairs crying. I can't wear these shoes. And I'm like, why can't you wear the tie shoes? I thought you decided on the tie shoes. And she says, she starts freaking out. Oh my gosh, well, because I can't tie it tight enough. And when I make the bow tight, it's loose. And when I don't make it tight enough, then, it, and then the strings are falling everywhere. So it's a big mess. So then I tie her shoes for her. I said, let me tie them. You know, mama can tie, but better not, I guess. I don't know. So I tie them. So she takes a couple steps and she's like, I, I don't like these. I don't like the way they feel. I don't want to wear them. I said, take them upstairs. And so she, I said, pick a different pair of shoes out. And she's like, are you serious, mom? Oh my goodness. Ah. And so she goes upstairs. Okay. And so by this time I'm thinking, I tell her, bring the boots downstairs. I will cut the strap, the strap that's hanging off. I'll cut that strap off and the strap off in the other boots. So it can match and you can wear your boots. Problem solved, easy fix, there we go. So we don't have a shoe catastrophe for the rest of the day, right? So she's like, okay. And so she's, you know, huffing and puffing or whatever she does. And she goes upstairs and she brings down the shoes. In the meantime, I went to go take, and while she's doing that, I took Hannah her vitamins. And I said, honey, you need to take some vitamins. She didn't really, eat, she didn't eat anything yesterday. And what she did drink, she kept throwing up. So she's very hesitant on putting anything in her mouth. And I'm like, Hannah, you didn't take your vitamins yesterday. You really need to take your vitamins today. It'll help you feel better. Well, she's five, drama girl, and she's crying and she's throwing a fit. I'm like, Hannah, you need to take your vitamins. I don't want to throw them up. You're not just, please take your vitamins. So she puts one vitamin in her mouth. So then all of a sudden, you know, Haley brings me down her boots. So she put, Hannah puts a vitamin in her mouth. Haley brings me down the boots. So I go in to the kitchen to cut off the thing. As I'm cutting the straps off, I hear Hannah gagging, mom, mom. And I've pulled, she's got long hair. And so I pulled her hair back several times, but tossing a turning got, so she's got hair, you know, and she's gagging. She feels like she's going to throw up. So I'm pulling back her hair and she's like, I told you I can't take the vitamins. I'm going to throw it up. I'm going to throw it up. And so I'm like, okay, just calm down. It's okay. We'll just not deal with the vitamins right now, you know, just, it's okay. And she's like, I told you, I can't eat anything. I can't take vitamins. So she's freaking out. So I'm like, okay, I got one daughter calmed down with the whole boot situation. The other daughter, she, you know, she's not feeling good. Really got to cut her some slack. So I'm like, okay, Hannah, don't worry about the vitamins. Just take, take a little sip of your Gatorade. It'll be okay. Get that issue resolved. Um, and then, so 
in the meantime, my two boys, they've already come down. They've taken their vitamins. Take, um, Colton's taken his medicine. He's eaten. And his chores to wash the dishes. Well, I'm cooking spaghetti tonight, so I have um, hamburger meat defrosting in the sink. So we have two sinks, and the dirty dishes go in one, and then when he washes them, he rinses the dirty dishes out in the other, and then puts them in the dishwasher to dry, right? Well, I have two, two pounds of hamburger meat defrosting, okay? So I'm still over there with Hannah, trying to calm her down, and my 13-year-old son says, Mom, I can't wash this. What am I supposed to do with the meat in, in the sink? Son, what do you think that you should do with the meat in the sink in order for you to wash the dishes? And he's like, well, I don't know. And I said, well, honey, you got to think this through. What do you think you should do with the meat that's defrosting in the sink so you can wash the dishes? And so he takes, the, takes the, it out, sets it on the counter so you can wash the dishes. I said, very good. Okay. Now I'm like, my 13 year old knows how to think about that. Okay, let's, let's move on. So then I finish up with Hannah and she says, I don't want Gatorade. Can I please have a Capri Sun? So I'm like, okay, you're sick. Okay. So I go to the fridge to get her Capri Sun. Guess what? Well, I have like at the bottom shelf, I have like the Capri Suns and, and other things in, in the bottom shelf. Well, I notice it's leaking at the bottom. And I'm like, what the heck's filled or leak? So I've got to take the whole shelf out and try and clean that up. And so I kind of get distracted very easily as, you know, I'm trying to do one thing, but then I do the other and I'm trying to multitask. So yes, I know I went to go get our Capri Sun, but I got distracted by the mess because of my OCD-ness. And so I take out the drawer and I start cleaning up the mess. Well, all of a sudden, as I'm trying to wipe up the mess in the fridge, I hear Peyton screaming and crying, my 10-year-old, and he's like, oh, this stupid medicine, ah, ah, and he's freaking out. And I'm like, what happened now? What, what's going on with you? And he goes, I spilled my stupid medicine. So his medicine's in a cup, and, uh, you know, it gets sticky when it's spilled, and so he's just, like, standing there, and he's yelling at the medicine, which is not going to do anything, and I'm like, well, Zoo, get a napkin and clean it up, and so he, like, goes over there, walks slowly, gets a napkin, Hannah's crying for her Capri Sun, so I rush over to the Capri Sun to Hannah, and I come back, and I wet a napkin, give it to Peyton, and I say, you need to clean up your medicine, please, so he's all mad and frustrated because he spilled his medicine, I'm like, it's not a big deal, it's fine, I don't like this medicine, I don't, you know, I don't want it, it's fine. It's not a big deal. We'll get some more medicine. So I go and I pour some medicine in a cup. I said, can you please be more careful and just take it straight down so it doesn't spill anything. And so, you know, he's still huffing and puffing away. So get him to take, do the medicine, give him the medicine. And I look over at the fridge and I'm like, well, I still got, the fridge is open. I still got stuff now. Now it's leaking out onto the floor because I have the fridge open and I took the drawer out. So not stuff is just not leaking in the fridge, it's leaking on the floor. So I go and I try and clean up that mess and I'm like, I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll get this accomplished. Okay. And so then Colton comes and gives me a hug while I'm saying bye mom. And so I tell him bye. So he, one kid off to school, two more to get off to school. So I'm like, okay, we can do this. So then I've got a real, at this point, I just fin finished cleaning up the fridge, right? And I've got everything back and my head is just boom, 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 pounding. And my headaches have been really, really bad lately. And so I'm like, I really need to take some medicine. But I haven't even eaten anything yet. And the way I get when I don't eat and I take some ibuprofen or something is I get really nauseous. I've got one kid pooping and puking. I don't need to be throwing up either. So I thought, well, let me shove something down my throat real quick to like bread, a muffin or something so I can take my medicine. And then I, I hear the kids, Peyton and Haley, and they're just running around, running around the house. They're playing around, not doing what they need. Nobody's brushed their teeth. Peyton still hasn't packed his lunch. Haley still hasn't done her hair. The clock is ticking, and I'm like, and this is every morning. Every This is why Haley likes to wake up early, because she does. She get, They all get distracted easily, but so Haley gets really distracted. And so it takes her like 20 minutes in the bathroom to brush her teeth, because she starts talking to herself in the mirror and starts dancing around and gets really distracted, so it's crazy. So I get distracted on what I'm trying to do is eat and take medicine, and I'm trying to say, hey, guys, y'all need to do. So, you know, I'm on them like white on rice, and I'm like, have you brushed your teeth? No. Have you packed your lunch? No. Okay, you need to go pack your lunch. You need to do your hair, and so I'm directing traffic like I usually do in the morning. Well, Hannah's, mom, mom, my tummy hurts, my tummy hurts. I feel like I'm gonna throw up, so I go over there, and she throws up, she throws up a little bit because she had some Gatorade, so she throws up a little bit of Gatorade, so clean her all off. 
and Haley, you know, she's in the bathroom doing her hair, and all of a sudden I hear Peyton in the bathroom. And I'm like, what are you doing in the bathroom with your sister? And he, oh, I'm just talking to her. They're laughing and playing. I said, Peyton, have you brushed your teeth? No, ma'am. Have you fed your fish? No, ma'am. Have you packed your lunch? Well, kind of. It's on the counter. I'm like, dude, y'all, the clock is ticking. Come on, Haley, you still need to you, you finish up with your hair. Go brush your teeth. Peyton, get out of the bathroom. Do your stuff. So he gets upset or whatever, and he has some puffs. So he goes up there, and he starts antagonizing Hannah. You know, when you're sick and you don't feel good, it's one of those, like, leave me alone. And she's a five-year-old girl on top of that. So he's like antagonizing her and I'm like, stop. Well, Zoe gets up and she's running around crazy because Hannah's crying and Peyton's screaming and yelling. So I realized, oh, Zoe hasn't gone potty yet. So I open the back door to take Zoe potty and the way our houses are, they're like really close together. And so our neighbors, they have a little baby next door and it's, you know, seven o'clock in the morning and I'm like, I'm sure they're still sleeping. And you've got Hannah screaming her head off and Peyton's like, I'm just trying to love you from a distance because I can't hug you because you're sick. And I'm like, shh. And so I start getting frustrated and I'm fussing at them to, to please be quiet because I've got the door open for Zoe to go out potty and I don't want to wake up the neighbors and have them be like really guys it's seven o'clock in the morning y'all screaming and yelling so I'm like guys y'all need to chillax just do what you need to get done and be done with it leave Hannah alone go do your stuff so he goes up and he does his stuff and so finally I get into the kitchen and Zoe's pawing at the door so I'm like okay so I thought I was gonna eat breakfast but I guess not so I let Zoe in and I'm like Hannah are you good she's like yes ma'am so Zoe comes in and she you know does does her thing so i'm like okay i've got a second let me you know get my vitamins get my medicine get my tea get my muffin you know whatever so i'm pouring my tea into my cup i have this like zero calorie tea to give me the caffeine but you know no calories so i pour in my tea and it spills on the counter and i'm like oh, of course it does you just got a smile through the day so i'm like of course it does and i'm like are you kidding me so I clean that up and I'm like, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, guys, y'all have not finished. By this time, Peyton has finally done everything. So he turns on a show, but Haley is now upstairs. It is 720 and she has still not brushed her teeth. Now, Peyton has environment like recycle club that he has to be at the school by 730 at the latest or he won't be able to do recycle club. So knowing that it's 720 and Haley hasn't even brushed her teeth yet, kind of getting a little freaked out. I'm like, hurry up, Haley, hurry up. And she's like, okay. So I shove a muffin down my throat so I can take my vitamins and my medicine to stop my head pounding. And I'm like, okay. So I go up there and I'm like, Haley, have you brushed your teeth? Well, I'm still trying. And I'm like, okay, now it's 725. We have to hurry up. So she hurries up and then I tell Hannah, okay, Hannah, I'm going to take them to school real quick right around the corner. And she, no, 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 no. So I'm like, okay, so if you're going to come with me, you're going to sit in the back seat so you're not close to them and don't get them sick. So it is 729 and we are just walking out the door and I'm carrying Hannah with her throw up bucket to try and go out to the truck and get her in the back of the truck get the kids in the truck, drop them off at school. It is 731 when they get dropped off. And I'm like, sorry, Peyton, like, you know, if we tried. One day we're early, one day we're late, and one day we're on time, you know, it's just an everyday thing. So that is just a little look at the first hour and a half into my morning. And I still gotta come home and deal with Hannah being sick and try and get in the shower to get ready for my doctor's appointment and share this video with y'all. So. My whole point in telling all this is this is the whole reason why I created this. This mama sanity thing was because my day can get pretty chaotic. Some mornings go smoother. Some mornings get 10 times worse than they were today. Sometimes they're screaming and yelling and fighting all morning. Sometimes it's happiness. Sometimes we're late. Sometimes we're not. It's just, it, it, it's different every day. But the thing is, is it's chaotic. None, none the least. And so that's why I started this. And um, I'm still going to do my daily devotionals, um, but I'm not, like I said before, I'm not going to share them every single day like I have been with y'all to repeat myself. But I do want to share something with y'all today that I researched over the weekend and I found, and I, I really do like it. So let me share it with you. I'm just me. I'm not perfect. I'm me. I've made bad decisions and wrong choices but I'm me. I've said the wrong things, I've said the right things, because I'm me. I don't live, I, I don't like everything that I have done, but I've did it because I'm me. 
I've loved the wrong people and trusted the wrong people. I'm still me. If I had a chance to start again, I wouldn't change a thing. Why? Because I'm me. There's a lot of good things that happen to me. You just need to look past the imperfections to see what's right. If you can't do that, then that's your loss. I'm the best that I can be. I am me. That really hit me because that is true to everybody. Everybody is their own person. Now that's not to say that not everybody, that's not to say we all don't need little changes and tweaks here and there because we all do. But that's not for other people to say. Having some a whole long backstory of this morning, there are probably a ton of you out there judging me right now. There are probably a lot of out, people out there saying, well, you got to cut the cord. You do too, I hear this all the time. You do too much for your kids. You baby your kids. You love on your kids too much. You do, you know, or sometimes you scream at your kids too much. Or you do, you're going to judge me whether, no matter what I do. Okay. And if you're going to judge me, there's nothing that I can do to stop it. Okay. My quote for today is do not judge. You do not know what the storm I have asked them to walk through is. And that's God saying to us. And I take that to heart because you don't know what my backstory is. You don't know the storms that God has asked me to walk through or that I'm walking through now. All you see is the here and now. All you see is the outside, what's, what I'm doing as a parent or what I'm doing as a wife or what I'm doing as a person. And you're going to judge me based on that. You know, you don't know if I hug and kiss my kids all day long and spoil them or love on them too much, which I don't even think that that's a thing, but apparently people have told me I love my kids way too much, but whatever. Um, you don't know because you don't know my childhood issues that, that I've grown up with. You know, you don't know other people's childhood issues you know like i tell my kids you know there are parents out there who beat the living crap out of their kids and they let their kids roam free and do whatever the heck they want and they don't check in and they don't care because they they don't want to mess with their kids we are not going to be those type of parents we want to know where you're going what you're doing who you're doing it with we want to meet the people you're hanging out with we want to know what you're listening to watching looking online we want to be in your business. Why? Because we're parents and that's our business. Now, some people may judge us and say, well, your, your children need to live their own lives. Everybody's different is my whole point. And everybody has a way that they are because the things that they've gone through, the mistakes that they've made, and they are the way they are. And you can't judge a book by its cover and you can't judge a person just by what you see you're going to think what you're going to think, but you don't know what they've gone through. So I hope you enjoyed my long rant for today. And I promise I won't be long ranting all the time. And like I said, um, whenever the spirit moves me, I will make another video. But until then, I hope you all have a great day and stay sane.